Today we'll be lesson 11 and we're going to be covering quarter rests and eighth rests in more detail. So first let's just remember that note values, when we see them placed on a staff, will be telling us which pitches or sounds to play or sing and also when and how long to hold them for. Whereas rest values, once we see them, or rests, once we see them placed on a staff on a sheet of music, are going to be telling us when and for how long to hold a silence. Reviewing our staff, which consists of five lines and four spaces, we number from the bottom to the top, one, two, three, four, five lines and one, two, three, four spaces. We could draw a whole note on space four. We just draw an open oval that we try to center right in space four. We could draw a half note on line four, and that would just be an open note head with a stem that goes down on the left because this note head is above line three. We could draw a quarter note in space two and we want a filled in note head with a stem going up and on the right because this note head is below line three and we could draw an eighth note we'll put it on line one filled in note head stem going up and on the right because the note head is below line three and we'll need a flag going down and to the right we learn that composers will add a clef sign to the leftmost side of the staff so that we can decode the pitches they want us to play. So we learned about a treble or G clef, which would start on line two, bump up to line three, down to line one, up and around, back down again. Every clef has a code embedded in it. This one indicates that line two is very important and that's because if we were to put a note head there that note would be given the pitch assigned the pitch g and from there we could decode all the other pitches on that staff and above and below it so again that's called a treble or g clef then we also learned about a bass clef or f clef which starts on line four bumps up to line five half a heart down and stops just under line two. There are two dots, one in space four, one in space three. Those three dots together form the code of this clef. If we were to put a note head right on that very important line four, we know it would be an F and from there we can decode all the other pitches on the staff. So again, remembering this is called a treble or G clef and this is called a bass or f clef all right so looking at the note value pyramid and the rest value pyramid next to each other remember that a whole note and a whole rest are going to be worth the same value or be held for the same duration a half note and a half rest will be held for the same duration, a quarter note or a quarter rest will be held for the same duration, an eighth note and an eighth rest will be held for the same duration, and a sixteenth note or sixteenth rest will be held for the same duration. The question is, are we holding a pitch or a sound, or are we holding a silence? So these values will tell us when and how long to play a silence for. These values will tell us when and how long to play a pitch or sound As for. we've already discussed many times, just want to reiterate that until these note or rest values are placed on a score with additional decoding information from the composer, the only thing we can know right now is their fixed relative value. So we can know that a whole note is always worth twice as much as a half note, a half note is always worth twice as much as a quarter note. A quarter note is always worth twice as much as an eighth note. An eighth note is worth twice as much as a sixteenth note. We can know that a whole rest is worth twice as much as a half rest. A half rest is worth twice as much as a quarter rest. A quarter rest is worth twice as much as an eighth rest. And an eighth rest is worth twice as much as a sixteenth rest. 
So as a hypothetical situation, if a composer were to tell us that an eighth note was to receive one beat, we can know that a sixteenth note should then only be given half a beat. We can know that a quarter note should then be given two beats, a half note should be given four beats, and a whole note should be given eight beats. Likewise, in that same scenario then, an eighth rest would be held for one beat. So the silence would be held for one beat. A quarter rest would be held for two beats. A half rest would be held for four beats. A whole rest would be held for eight beats. And a sixteenth rest would be held for just half a beat. So we are on unit two, lesson three. This is the unit on rhythm. We're reading the lesson on quarter rest and eighth rest today. This is a quarter rest. The silence of a quarter rest lasts as long as the sound of a quarter note. So another way of saying this is the silence of a quarter rest has the same duration as the sound of a quarter note. A quarter rest tells us when and how long to play a silence for. And a quarter note tells us when and how long to play a pitch or a sound for. This is an eighth rest. The silence of an eighth rest lasts as long as the sound of an eighth note, or it has the same duration. An eighth rest has the same duration as an eighth note. An eighth rest would tell us when and how long to hold a silence for, and an eighth note would tell us when or how long, and how long, sorry, to hold a pitch or a sound for. All right, so they then show us the very correct quarter rest drawn in three steps like this, a little swoop, jag across, and then another little scoop. So they do swoop, jag across, another little swoop, swoop, jag across, another little swoop. Again, I've shared in past lessons, the way we learned to do that in theory class was just a Z with a swoop. And if you look here, that actually is very similar to what happens on a computer so a z with a swoop so that's how i'm going to draw them they say to trace the quarter rest shown below then draw five more quarter rests on the staff to the right of the rest you traced One, two, three four there we go z and a swoop z and a little tail okay an eighth rest is drawn in two steps like this so they show us a little swoop with a line down, very similar to a seven, right? Again, I learned it more as just put a little dot in space three. Sometimes even we do it more on like line four and then just a little swoop it down. So um, that's about how I'm gonna draw them. Trace the eighth rest shown below, then draw five more eighth rests on the staff to the right of the rest you traced. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five. So continuing on page two with some review, circle all the quarter rests in the staff below. So quarter rests. Well, we have an eighth note, another eighth note. They're beamed together. We have a quarter note, quarter rest, Z with the tail. Here we have an eighth note. Here we have a half rest because it's a Hat that's sitting on line three. We have a half note, another quarter rest, and an eighth rest. Circle all the eighth rests in the staff below. So here we have a half note, eighth rest, eighth note, quarter rest, quarter rest, quarter note, eighth rest, eighth note, Eighth note, eighth note. These guys are beamed right here. Whereas this guy has just the flag. And then we have a half note. What kind of rests are shown below? Circle the correct answer. So this is a heavy hat hanging from line four. So obviously a whole rest. Then we have a quarter rest. An eighth rest. Then a light hat sitting on line three, so we know that's the half rest, worth only half the duration of a whole rest, and then another quarter rest. 
And our last little bit here, true or false, circle the correct answer for each. So this is asking, first of all, we have to identify what we're looking at. It says is a whole rest, because this is a heavy hat hanging from line four, equal to a whole note. Yes, it's just going to indicate whether it's a silence or a pitch. That's the only difference, but they're both whole notes or whole rests, so that is true. Is an eighth note equivalent to a quarter rest? Well, no, an eighth note would be equivalent to an eighth rest, so that's false. Would a quarter rest equal an eighth rest plus an eighth rest? Well, yes, it would, because a quarter rest broken into two equal parts would be two eighth rests, right? So that would be true. Would a half note be equivalent to, what kind of rests are these? Well, these are half rests because they're light hats that are sitting on line three. So no, that's not true because that would be the equivalent of two half notes, right? So that's going to be false.